E85 fuel can provide epic levels of horsepower and race gas performance on pump gas, and actually in my case, much less than pump gas prices. I've noticed that in my journey on getting this car running on E85, which I've recently done, I found a lot of confusing information and I decided to summarize it up in this video. So today I'm gonna to take you guys through where to put your E85 uh, flex fuel sensor, how to wire it, specifically with the Holly Terminator X, how to pin it, as an input in your computer and hopefully this helps save you guys some time because I had a little bit of trouble getting this thing working. Let's get down to it. So what does a flex fuel sensor do? Well it measures the ethanol content of your fuel and it feeds that information into your computer. Essentially based on the ethanol content you need to change how much fuel the car gets and then from things like that like from the ethanol content level, you can adjust how much timing is in your car. So a giant advantage to E85 is that you can run a lot more timing because the octane level is essentially much higher. So that's why pump, you know, pump E85, which in my case is only reading about, you know, 55% ethanol is still like race gas compared to my 94 octane. You can obviously go out and buy actual E85, 85% content fuel but what I've found from all the research I've done and all the videos I've watched and all the sloppy podcasts I listen to, once you're at that 55% ethanol mark, you're pretty much good to go. Like you shouldn't be tuning your car, you know, on specifically to be on E85. You can tune your car on just regular pump, 50% ethanol and still get massive performance differences over pump gas. And that's the whole point of this because I can take this car to the track for a weekend now and I can pay $1.35 a liter for fuel even though I'm going to use a bit more. Uh, for contrast, C16 here in BC is something like $10 a liter. So it's well over, you know, five, six, seven times the price. Um, and our 94 octane in the summer is just over two bucks a liter. So essentially I'm getting way better performance for actually way less money than pump 94. And that's pretty cool. Now, one last conceptual thing before I take you through how to wire the sensor. What you need to understand is that how the sensor works is it runs on a frequency input in the Holly ECU. So essentially it has to deliver a frequency in a very particular way for your computer to be able to measure it. And that's going to tie into the wiring and one of the very common problems that I've seen online and an actual an issue that I actually have when I first set this up. The first step is where do you put it? Obviously fuel comes from your fuel tank at the back of the car, it gets pumped up to the front, goes through the injectors through the fuel pressure regulator and back down the return path. So some people put their flex fuel sensor in the feed path, some people put it in the return path. I put mine in the return path. And the reason for that is because I didn't want to restrict flow into my engine on the feed side. So just quickly on the mounting side of things, we'll just have a look under my car here. And you can see this is my flex fuel sensor here. It's a uh, Continental, there's the part number, I'll post it in the description. You can see that it's got, uh, it essentially just intercepts the feed, the return line. So this line here, sorry, I'll take my light out of here. This line here comes from the engine and that line there goes back to the fuel tank. These fittings on here that adapt it to AN are just those, uh, they're pretty standard fitting. They're called like an EFI quick connect fitting and if you look at the sensor here, this is the wiring pigtail that comes, uh, you can buy them on Amazon for like 10 bucks, uh, or you can buy them a variety of places. Okay, now wiring wise here, this camera will let me focus in. There we go. You can see that there's three pins on this. Oh my goodness, sorry guys, just having a hard time focusing. But the very top pin says out, the middle pin says ground and the very bottom pin says VCC that obviously lines up on the pigtail and essentially out is the output to your computer that goes to your Holly input ground is a ground that has to go to the sensor ground and VCC is 12 volt power now I'll draw this up on a piece of paper for you here quickly and I'll explain some of the nuances of how you actually wire this thing and how you make it work so this is what this looks like on a piece of paper you have your flex fuel sensor, your pigtail is plugged into it, and there are three wires. There is out, there is ground, and there is VCC. Now, two of these are very simple. 
The first one that I would say is probably actually not that intuitive, but is simple is ground. That ground is actually your sensor ground. So you'll see all kinds of people complaining about um, essentially the, the sensor isn't, it's, it's not smooth, the values look really bad. And the reason is that they are using a chassis ground. You have to use the sensor ground and this comes off the Holly IO harness. Sorry, this comes off of the Holly power tap harness. Next up, VCC. This one is just 12 volts. And funny enough, this one too can come off the power tap. So for those of you that don't know, the power tap is something that's on a Terminator X and it's a four pin, uh, it's like your regular looking Metropack connector. It's a four pin plug and it has a 12 volt, it has a chassis ground, it has a sensor ground and it has a five volt. Now, the output is an interesting one. So the output goes to one of your Holly uh, input pins essentially on your IO harness in the car. But this is a frequency input. So I will do some very fancy picture in picture in here and I will show you, if you look at the pinout for your uh, Holly Terminator X IO connector, you'll see the inputs. The ones with the F, that's a frequency input. You can't use these outputs, these are not for this. But essentially all four of the Terminator X inputs are actually frequency inputs. So it shows you on the connector, which I will show you here later, uh, essentially the pin A, B, C, D, and then the corresponding ECU pin A12, A3, A13. So this is what you actually see physically on the black connector, which I will show you. And this is what you're gonna see in the pin map on the Holly ECU. Now you will see that I have added something. So on the frequency output, this is connected to your computer, remember, into your IO connector. We also have spliced into it a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And this resistor is tied into the five volt reference on the Holly power tap. Now, I think to some people that may make absolutely no sense. And essentially how I understand it or how I would explain it is this. The frequency itself Holly wants to see something that is very consistent and even though this is the wrong way to think about it, you can either think about it as a one, which would be like that, or a zero, should be like that. So you could imagine your frequency input to the computer is providing a whole bunch of these essential, like, you know, quote unquote ones and zeros for the computer to measure. So what else would that look like? So if we were to say this one or zero, you know, if this axis here is time and this axis is voltage, the top of this is five volts and the bottom of this is zero volts. So essentially if you hook up your sensor without this little resistor and five volt reference on it, your output is just gonna look like this. There's no five volts for it to ever determine what the frequency actually is. So you can think about it, and again, this, this probably isn't right, but the way I think about it is your computer is almost turning on and off this five volts. Because I believe when the sensor operates, it pulls this down to ground, which brings this down to zero volts. And you have this big old resistor here so that no current can flow from your five volt reference into here. All it's really getting is the, the, you know, the five volt aspect of it. So essentially all your output is doing is pulsing this five volts super fast. I mean, that's the way I think about it. Again, it may not be right, uh, but that is absolutely critical. And I will show you very shortly what that actually looks like in the car. So you understand how to do that. All right, we are deep behind my dash here and I will show you these two connectors. Now, first things first, the IO connector. Oh dear, can we focus? Well, if you look at the IO connector, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, 
but these pins right where my thumb is they're actually labeled a b c d so on and so forth so you find your frequency uh, input that you want to use and that's the pin that you use and this obviously goes to the computer now right beside it is the power tap so off of the power tap this is where you get your um, obviously this is where you get your 12 volt your 5 volt your sensor ground uh, the order off the top of my head I think this guy here with the white stripe yeah that one is the sensor ground the second one in here this one in the middle is the 5 volt and this guy here on the outside is the 12 volt now check this out my 5 volt reference here's my resistor soldered in line so that 5 volt pin comes right off there resistor soldered in and that gray wire there is my flex fuel input into the computer very cool so obviously everyone has seen that diagram and you know what not everyone knows how to read electrical diagrams so that's physically what it looks like you connect a wire solder the resistor in line and on this side of the resistor that guy is soldered and tapped directly onto your input wire all right i'm very crudely videotaping my laptop here this is not meant to be an e85 tuning video or anything of that sort but i'm just going to really quickly show you guys how to have this configured in case you're having an issue with that so first you need to have uh this guy the io icf in it so you will create yourself a new input i called mine flex it says it is not defined to an ecu pin yet Essentially, I hit enable and then I hit configure. And in configure, all you do is you select. Wow, that is so blurry. Anyways, you can probably see what I'm doing here. You select GM Flex Fuel from the drop down list of a ton of stuff, right? Okay, so now you'll have an input that is called Flex. You'll see here, it is not defined. So next you go over to your pin map and look at that. In the pin map, there is an F for flex. So you literally click and drag it down to the ECU pin that I showed you earlier. So here you'll see an A4. That A4 corresponds to that table that I showed you earlier on my phone. Uh, which actually defines which one of the Holly I.O. pins, the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, corresponds to the ECU pin. I really wish Holly would have made this simpler and the inputs would just be A, B, C, or D, but they let you use the ECU pin. So just make sure that when you plug your wire in, after everything's wired up, you double check the pin, A, B, C, D, and then you, you double check that table and the table will tell you which input, for example, pin number, you know, pin letter B actually is, or whichever one I'm using in this case. I don't even, I don't even remember which one I used. But essentially that is it. So now you have a flex sensor. Now, there are a number of advanced tables you need to add. I'm not gonna go into all of this stuff in detail. Sloppy does a way better the job than I do, but essentially you need a fuel flow modifier which adds fuel anytime it sees, you know, ethanol. So this is really the most important one, but you'll see that, you know, at 50% flex, we're adding whatever, 20% fuel. Uh, I've also got a target air fuel ratio offset. And the funny thing about this guy is you'll notice it doesn't do anything until the car is in boost. Uh, and we also have a timing offset, which again, I'm adding timing when I have flex fuel on. I'm not going to go through all this, but it only does it in boost. Now, one misconception that I had, because I actually had a friend whose car was on ethanol, is I thought that it's super hard to get an ethanol tune and it's going to be a nightmare making the flex work. And I'll just put that to bed right now. I literally filled this car up with E50, you know, pump ethanol out of the gas station. 
I put the three sloppy tables in. I literally looked at his video and I used the same numbers in his video and the car fired right up. And it was running, I said, okay, it seems okay. And then I took it on a 50 kilometer round trip and it, it, just, it just worked perfect. Part of that's obviously because my gas tables, my gas fuel tables are, are pretty good. You know, I've got a few days driving around and tuning the car, but don't think that this is super difficult. It, it's totally, totally not difficult at all. And it's unbelievable how well those tables work. The only thing I had to add to this car was a cranking fuel offset. That's something I'm playing with right now. So it's essentially another advanced table and it adds cranking fuel uh, based on ethanol content. And I don't know if that's doing anything. I, I, like I say, I'm just playing around with it because I want it to start a little bit quicker. But all in all, uh, this stuff is not rocket science. This is a wicked way for you to make a ton of power and you know cost the same price as pump gas you're not going out spending 300 dollars or 250 dollars canadian on a tub of c16 you just go down and you know pick up a jerry can for 35 or 40 bucks and you go race for the weekend so i hope this video was informative to you guys i apologize for some of the some of the quality of the content but i'm just really trying to produce things that i think are going to help you guys and not focus exactly on you know making the prettiest edits ever uh, because a lot of this stuff, as I learn it, I figure it's probably useful. So I'll put it out into the universe for you. So thanks for checking out the channel, guys. I hope this helped you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one.